Welcome to this value added program that is offered by Yashwant Mahavidyalaya Nanded titled as the soft skills. In the last video we understood the structure of this course and the way in which you are evaluated for this course. Today let us get started with understanding what soft skills are. What are these soft skills? Have you ever heard about it? Do you ever know as to what these soft skills are? We belong to this time of revolution, whereupon right from the barbaric type of living, from the huntsman maybe staying in the uh, forests and jungles, we have come down to become very civilized people staying in villages, developed into towns and then cities and now metros. From that type of teaching learning situation whereupon the teacher would be using a chalk and talk, we have come down to such type of situation even in education where it is not chalk and talk but it is mouse and computer. It is not cane and students and teachers voice but it is a teacher's voice along with internet. It is not the books that we refer to now only as a source of knowledge but it is internet and the fifth Veda in the today's world, that is Google. So it is a time of revolution where the everything, every nuance of life is getting changed. And in this changed life, where the borders are breaking and the minds are traveling, the entire world is shrunk into a global village. Once upon a time to travel to America required a few months. To go abroad, did not have any guarantee of coming back, though traveling was supposed to be one of the best means for acquiring knowledge, there was no guarantee that the traveler might come back with added knowledge. But today, we can go around the world, if not in 24 days, but definitely within a week and come back to our place of journey. This is the time where the minds are traveling across. And this is the way where the borders of the countries are breaking away, thus merging all the countries into one. In this postmodern world, we can stay in India, drinking the Chinese tea, eating the Italian noodles, maybe watching a Japanese television, maybe which is an American-based film, written by Richard Madison and talking about the zombie land in films like I Am Legend. So staying in your house, you could be using all the delicacies of the entire world and leading a cosmopolitan life, which once upon a time, some 50 years back, was impossible to dream about. But today, it's a living reality. And in this reality, what is more important is the development of hard skills as well as soft skills to lead a comfortable and a victorious life. What do you mean by this? The hard skills are the technical or job related skills, which are completely related to the subject knowledge, which appear on your resume or your curriculum vita. And they talk about your education, your experience, your level of expertise and so on and so forth. These can be seen, which could be recorded on a piece of paper as you, Y-O-U in inverted commas. But soft skills are those which cannot be seen on a piece of paper. They are highly non-technical and related to your personality habits and traits. They are the social graces which facilitate with language, your attitude, your personality, your friendliness, your optimism, and the values that you cherish, and the personality that you maintain, which cannot be written on a piece of paper, but which can definitely be observed and are responsible for the success in your life. People say that it is hard skills that are very important in this world, but along with hard skills, your soft skills also are required because these soft skills are called as the emotional skills. If the hard skills are intellectual skills, the soft skills are emotional skills. If the hard skills can be managed with IQ, intelligent quotient, 
and can be tested with a formula. The soft skills are EQ, emotional quotient, along with IQ. A balanced EQ also is required for the success in life, for a peaceful living. And hence, in the postmodern world, maximum emphasis is given to soft skills and EQ rather than even the hard skills and IQ. And hence, it is very essential for us to pick up proper and appropriate soft skills in order to be a successful man and also in order to lead a balanced life. Now, what are these soft skills? These soft skills are nothing but whatever you will be learning in this paper. The interpersonal skills, the team working along with others, the positive attitude that you maintain, the values that you cherish in your life, the perception of a particular thing, whether from a positive side or a negative side, further from an optimistic side or a pessimistic side. The perception of anything is responsible for you to accept it and act accordingly. Along with this perception, the group discussions that you participate into and the interview skills that you exhibit while giving an interview. Because even if you want to settle in your life and give an interview, nowadays interviews are preceded by the group discussions, the way in which you maintain the group skills, the team skills, the way in which you participate in a discussion, the way in which you give chance to others to speak out, the way in which you respect them, the way in which you accept others and also establish yourself and your point of view. The confidence with which you face your interview and maintain yourself as a developed leader. How do you establish yourself as a leader? By ascertaining your leadership skills. How can you manage time properly for doing various things, especially the multitasking in the postmodern world? Along with time management, how will you manage your stress so that you could keep yourself cool and calm and behave yourself with compose and express yourself as a successful individual? And the most important of all, other than leadership skills, time management and stress management is, how would you communicate to the world? How would you maintain your communication skills? All these will enable you to pick up the right soft skills so that you could be more adjusting in this world, more accommodating in this world, more working with others with the interpersonal skills and establishing yourself as a leader to leave the footprints on the sands of time. Let us understand each word. The team working and interpersonal skills is the other. In fact, it is the team, which is an acronym, which means together everyone achieves more. Whatever you do in this world, even if you are there in the educational system, you cannot be learning alone. You would be learning with, along with other friends, along with your teachers. And the teachers with different aptitudes, attitudes and expressions. The students with different understandings and adjustment levels. With everybody, you have to adjust and work together for a better future. Take the example of your own house. You would not be living in your own house alone. You would be supported by your father, equally supported at the domestic level by your mother. The father supports with money maybe. The father supports with the financial status and the luxuries that you enjoy. The mother supports you with emotion, love, food, care, with your brother, with your sister, with your grandmother, with your grandfather, with your uncles, with your aunts, with your cousins and neighbors. You need to adjust in order to live happily with everybody. Don't you think? It is the same at the workplace. It is the same in the society. It's the same in the country. Wherever you are, we work together and we should learn to work together. We will not be staying alone and say that I am successful because of my own self. I'm a self-made man and I don't require anybody at all. No, the world is not a place to stay alone. We are all social animals and we need to stay together with everybody, adjusting to the physical, emotional, technical needs of many. And hence, life itself is to live together 
and in steam working becomes a very interesting soft skill to pick up. And when we are living with everybody in the society, a positive attitude counts a lot because as it is said, attitude is everything. Life is 10% and what happens to you is 90% as, you know, Charles talks about. I know I'm awesome, so I don't care about your opinion is a very wrong attitude. This again isolates you. And as a result, we could find in the postmodern texts how man has become isolated, separated, alienated from the society and started suffering mental disorders. This is what exactly the post-World War literature is full of. It's only a positive attitude that gives you power over your circumstances instead of your circumstances having power on you. And in, in life, a bad attitude is like a flat tire. You can't get very far until you change it with a good attitude. I will get 11 out of 10 with my smile on my face to face any situation only can enable you to say, yes, I can. It is attitude, remember, which is everything. And having a positive attitude in life is a must for peace, for success, and for the overall development of not only your own life, but people around you and your country. Along with positive attitudes, it is values that you cherish in your life, which, is, which makes your personality. What are these values? Just close your eyes and think as to what you have at the top priority, whether it is your family, relationships, friends, respect, emotions, belief, help and caring. What exactly is the or are the things that you cherish most. That will be your value. You live for it and you die for it for the sake of cherishing the value. Some of the values that I could note down are on your screen. There could be many more added by you. It could be honesty. People live and die for honesty, as you could find. Raja Harishchandra, never to tell lies, never to, never to uh, you know, Say no to whatever he has said. Never to break the promise. Always speaking the truth. Courage could be one of the values. Fairness. Not doing anything wrong to anybody, even if it is an enemy, is fairness. Respect to all could be one of the values cherished. Caring. Caring not only to the people whom you know, not only the people who belong to your family, not only to your friends and relatives, but also to those whom you don't know. Maybe you're walking on the road and you meet somebody, an orphan boy crying, take care and do whatever is required. A man who has met with an accident, do whatever is required. Maybe an old woman trying to cross the street, help her cross it. Maybe an old man shivering, help him come out of this cold. All this is caring and they are the important values that you cherish. Trust. Keeping your own promises is your trust. Not breaking the trust of others on you is an important value. All your Pajatanta stories are based upon cherishing these values. All your Jataka tales that we heard in our childhood are cherishing these values. Yes, it is values that you maintain. Maintain your personality. So you should maintain the good values in your life. And have a wonderful perception Perception is the way in which you look at things. If you look at the first picture, what do you see? Just look at it for a few minutes. What do you see? Yes, it is a vase that you could see if you concentrate on the white part of it. If you concentrate to look at the black part that is surrounding the vase, you could find that there are two faces looking at each other. Yes or no? So it's the same picture, but the perception that matters. Look at the second picture carefully for two seconds and tell me as to what do you understand from it. If you look from the left side, you would find that it is a rabbit. Yes, isn't it? And if you look from the right side, what do you find? The picture changes from rabbit to a duck. Now this is the famous duck-rabbit puzzle of the psychologists. 
Whether you look at it as a rabbit or whether you look at it as a duck depends upon the perception that you maintain. Come down to the third picture. Look at it for two seconds continuously and tell me what you look at. Yes, it's a picture of nature. The river you could find, the moon and the moonlight on the river waters you could see, the various plants you could see. Yes, very good. It's a picture depicting nature on a full moon night. Look at it carefully for two more seconds and tell me as to what else do you find in it. Yes, don't you find the picture of the face of a woman with the two eyes, the nose, the lips, and the outline of the face. Do you find it? If you don't, look at it for two more seconds. That's right. So both the pictures are hidden in the same picture. It's the perception that matters. The next one is even more interesting. Look at these zebra crossings that we have. They are all, in fact, the straight lines, the straight horizontal lines that we have drawn. Are the horizontal lines parallel or do they slope down, down or up or whatever? In fact, they are all horizontal parallel lines. But because of the presence of these black blocks, you look as if the horizontal lines are going up or going down. The perception that matters. Look at the fifth picture. Very good. The vase is there. It is almost an elaborated and a colored picture of the first picture. The vase has been seen. That is the first thing that we can see. If you look at it very carefully, you could see the picture of an old woman looking from the left side onto the eyes of the old man who is on the right side. Can you make it out? Yes, the old woman with her long hair, the earrings, and the old man with the moustache and the bald head. That's right. So it's the perception that matters. Look at the last picture. This is very interesting. Actually, it is a stable picture, which is not a static one, which is not moving. But if you look at it very carefully, you would feel as if every circle is moving about due to the optical illusion. The fourth picture and the sixth picture, in fact, are the pictures of the optical illusion. And so what we think when we look at a particular situation or a particular man, or a particular character, or a particular piece of poem, if we are literature students, is not the only meaning that you get. That could be our perception. And our perception depends upon our experiences. Our perception depends upon our understanding of life. Our perception might also depend upon various attitudes that we maintain, various understandings that we maintain of life and of people. It could be because of privileges and prejudices that we carry. It, many a times we become judgmental on many things based upon the prior notions of understanding of it. We are never completely optimistic and completely objective. Many a times our subjective mind with perceptions, with judgmental attitude, with privileges, with prejudices, we tend to judge people and judge situations. Now, there could always be the second part of the coin. If we are looking at the heads, there could always be the tails, even though we might not see it from the side. We always could have the heads and the tails. Not only the heads and the tails in this postmodern world, it could be hundreds of interpretations that could be possible. And whenever we are looking at anything, a situation or a person or an example or a story, we should be open to the acceptance of all these things. And this is what makes it most humane with humbleness and humility. And that matters a lot when we maintain the relationships with others. So it's our perception that matters. Group discussion is the next soft skill that we said. And what do you mean by group discussion? A small topic is given to us on the spot and we are supposed to maintain a group with unknown people, maybe 9 to 10, maybe 8 to 12, maybe sometimes 5 to 7. We are supposed to sit across the table and discuss the topic that is given to us threadbare, whatever strikes to our mind. 
in whatever way we understand it because of our prior knowledge. We are supposed to put our understanding emphatically using a good language to others. We are supposed to listen to others, cross them, if at all it is not in a very polite way, and emphasize our own expression. We might agree with some, we might disagree with some. How to agree with others, how to disagree with others, and how to say no to somebody whom you totally disagree with, and how to emphatically emphasize your point or express your point is what is more important in a group discussion. The group discussion talks about group behavior, the behavior that you maintain when you are in a group, good communication skills with the help of which you express yourself, focus on coherence and your presentation of content in a more effective way. This is an important skill that we have to develop. We cannot be fighting with those people who disagree. We cannot be at the back of those people or completely agreeing with somebody in a very sheepish way. We agree with somebody, we disagree with somebody and we maintain a sort of balance in both. In group discussion, it is this balance that we maintain when we interact with people that is tested. Whether we can first of all accept others, whether we can accept criticism, whether we can accept another's point of view, whether we know that there are different points of view and we have to bear with all, merge all and go ahead with a positive attitude is what is tested in a group discussion. Interview skills is the next soft skill that we understood. How do you plan for an interview? How do you apply for it? How do you dress for an interview? How do you prepare for the questions? How do you maintain a calm and composed attitude when you are facing there? How do you manage your time to reach there properly at a proper time prior to the time that is mentioned and remain cool and calm? How do you practice? Practice telling your stories related to the questions that could be asked, that might be asked in the interview. Have you done the research on the job, on the company where you have applied and for the post that you have applied? Who would be asking you and how would you answering them? How would you eat properly, hydrate yourself and maintain cool and calm composure? How would you rehearse or practice the questions that you would be facing? How would you face the interview with great confidence and a smile on your face, rather than sweating too much and making a mess of it? All these are various skills that you can develop. By skills, we mean that you can develop them. They are not inborn, but you can always develop them. How could you develop it? Are the various interview skills that could be you know, managed, developed, and exhibited for the success in your life. Leadership skills. All of us want to become leaders, don't we? None of us want to become followers. Yes or no? But at the end of the day, many of us remain as followers. Why? What exactly is a leadership skill? How would you plan every occasion? How would you maintain your own team? How are the decisions maintained in the team? How with a proper communication, all these decisions are communicated to your team members? How would you be a successful person in your business or in your career? And become a role model to not only a few, but hundreds and thousands. So that every person plans, every person dreams to become a you. What footsteps do you leave when you leave this world for others? All these are the leadership skills. And definitely they matter, they are skill and they can be picked up, they can be developed. Nobody is a born leader, everybody is a made leader and these skills can be developed with high grade of patience, perseverance, practice and execution. For doing everything, time is very interesting and it doesn't wait for anybody. You have to manage your time or else it will manage you. And effective time management starts with clear vision and goals of life. Have you had your division in your life? Do you have a goal in your life? And are you planning to reach these goals? If you may be successful, you may not be successful in managing the time to reach a particular smaller one, smaller height of goal. Doesn't matter, plan it again, execute it, don't get depressed. How are you managing your time? 
will decide on how are you managing your life. So time management becomes an important skill. Along with time in this world of post-war, post-modern society, you also have to manage your stress. What is the stress? And how do you manage it? The moment you are doing multitasking and are not able to manage your time, you have big dreams to become the leader, but your team is not allowing you to. There are different people who are pulling you back. Your boss is dominating you and is not allowing you to express. You can have hundreds of problems. How are you managing all these hundreds of problems? With a composure in your head, with a balance in your mind, with a peace in your heart. All these matter a lot in order to move ahead in your life. How are you sharing your feelings? Do you laugh? Do you exercise? Do you sleep properly? Do you really meditate? Do some yoga? Be with nature? How do you manage your time? Do you listen to music? What exactly do you do to manage your stress and come out of it? Then again, manage yourself and your time and be a successful person in this world is what the entire life is about. We often listen to people telling that I'm stressed out, I'm mad at it, I'm bold, I'm frustrated, I leave it. How will you come out of it to become a successful person matters a lot. So stress management is very essential for you to establish yourself as a successful individual. To do all these things, yes, as a language teacher, communication skills is very, very important. What are the four communication skills that are essential? Like listening, speaking, reading, writing, which together become the verbal communication skills. And what are the non-verbal communication skills that you have to maintain? All these matter a lot to establish yourself as a successful person. When you say skill, skills are those that can be developed. They have some techniques and these techniques are to be followed and practiced and they have to be developed. Nobody is born with a skill and these skills can be developed. Now you look at yourself in a mirror. Are you a cat looking yourself as a lion? Are you a lion looking yourself as a lion? That is what decides your life. If you are a cat looking at yourself as a lion in the mirror, that's wrong. You're having a wrong presentation. Become a lion, be a lion, you are a lion and establish yourself as a lion. Live the world and leave the world gracefully. And for this, you need to develop all these skills, which are softer, which are emotional. And these soft skills will enable you to establish yourself as a lion in this world. Just make a small source analysis of yourself. So it is nothing but it's an acronym. S stands for strength. W stands for weaknesses. O stands for opportunities and T stands for threats. Close your eyes and just imagine what your strengths are. They could be anything. Maybe you are very good at singing, that could be your strength. Maybe you are very good at dancing, that could be your strength. Maybe you are very good um, in communication skills, that could be your strength. Like I have listed a few of mine. Communication skills is my strength. Confidence, yes, knowledge, maybe. Observant, yes, I'm a good observant and trustworthy and bold. Every individual also would have some weaknesses. Close your eyes and try to recollect what could be your weaknesses. You can't say I don't have any. Because you could be highly emotional. That could be a weakness. You could be a bold speaker. You could be you know, very outspoken. That could be your weakness. You could be short-tempered. That could be your weakness. Right? Uh, you could be an extra frank person. That could be also your weakness. So just understand what your weaknesses are. The moment you understand what your strengths are and weaknesses are, you could work for reducing your weaknesses and maintaining or enriching your strengths. Also understand what your opportunities are, like you are doing BA or BSc or BCom, MA, MSc or MCom, what your opportunities are. Yes, you can work for an IT company, you can work for a travel industry because Nanded is situated in a place where Gurdwara uh, is very famous for and surrounding you have many temples um, like Mahur, like Aunda like Parli, Tuljapur, Sholapur, Kolhapur, etc. So you can become a good travel uh, person. Um, I can, you can become a guide like and work for the travel industry if you have developed language 
language or you could go for academics could become a teacher at various levels what exactly are your opportunities think about it or are these the opportunities or you can have in many more like in this covid 19 situation where everything is in lockdown uh, it is the internet that has become your most important friend and through internet can you do some blogs and reach the world can you uh, develop some videos whichever are your strengths based upon your strengths can you develop some videos can you develop some uh, podcasts what exactly are the opportunities that are involved that are that you have in this world the moment you learn this language or the moment you master this skill just just list them out and then think as to what you can work out with and come out of it what could be your threats yes for every opportunity you also have a threat the threat could be like competition too many people are there like I wanted to do something in communication skills and soft skills. I could open the internet and see that there are hundreds of people already doing it. Why should I do it? Too much of competition. Financial threats could be there. You may not get the money that you want to if you want to make it as a career. Should I make it or should I not make it? And in these uh, COVID-19 situation where the job cuts are there, already people who are having jobs are losing jobs. Will I get job? Will I get a proper you know, exposure? In this time of inflation, where everything is getting cut down, how can I manage myself? What is going to be my future? All these could be threats. It's good if you're thinking all this. You have to think about your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So that for every threat that you identify, think and plan as to how you can overcome it. If you're not able to get a breakthrough, you can read some biographies. You could follow a few you know, famous people. A person who has become famous, remember, had not become famous in a fraction of a second in one day. His entire lifetime has been spent in struggling and overcoming various difficulties. If people can, yes, you also can. All you require is a positive attitude. So how these threats can be overcome in your own limits? How the various opportunities can be multiplied? How the weaknesses could be reduced? how the strengths could be increased and you can establish your personality. You're very good at political science. You're very good at economics and you want to make your career in economics and you don't know how to. Start, start making a sort analysis of yourself and you can come out with various plans, the plans that people previously never came about or thought about. The plan that could be very entrepreneurial or new that could win success to you. So plan about it. It's the time that you think about yourself. Enough of thinking about everything else outside your life, outside your body. Now is the time for you to think what is going on within. And when you are moving slowly within, you are doing a SWOT analysis of your own self. The moment you are thinking and doing the SWOT analysis for your own self, yes, you'll come out with hundreds of solutions, which may be very novel very new, very enterprising, very entrepreneurial, which would win and establish yourself as a unique person. So the importance of these soft skills is that success in life, especially in one's own profession, is because of these soft skills. Hard skills, all the students who are there learning BA or MA, maybe English, will be having the same soft skills, will be having the same hard skill. But whatever soft skill you have is unique for you which will enable you to stand out in this competitive corporate world or maybe in this competitive world as such. It, these soft skills will enable you to excel in the place of work. In your workplace, they will make you stand in a unique height. And the, in the age of information and knowledge, they're very, very important. And the soft skills complement the hard skills and can be developed through proper training. The hard skills you already have been struggling with, striving with, and you have taken admission into a good college, opted for good courses, are getting trained from good teachers, and definitely you are going to be successful with A plus order in your CBCS credits. I'm sure of all these things. But along with these hard skills on the paper, you also need to develop the soft skills, which could be developed through proper training and proper techniques which we are going to learn in these you know, soft skill course. Thank you very much for joining me in the soft skill program. 
and having a patient listening to what these soft skills are, how these can be trained and developed and create a mark of your success in this world. Bye for now.